Well, greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Brian's Bible Break, as we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them. This morning we're in Psalm 7, and reading verses 10 to 12 from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this glorious day that you've given us, Lord, and we rejoice in it. O oh God, as we come into your holy presence this day, Lord, we pray that you will guide us rest, guide us into rest and to uh, rejuvenation, Lord, as we meditate on your word. Grant us wisdom from above that will lead us in the way we should go, Lord, that we may walk according to your ways. Lord, we, uh, we just pray that you will speak into our hearts a word of encouragement and hope. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So Psalm 7 verses 10 to 12. God is my shield, saving those whose hearts are true and right. God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. If a person does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. He will bend the string. Sorry, he will bend and string his bow. This Psalm of David's uh, reflects an honest truth about God and our relationship with him. He begins by saying, God is my shield. God is our shield. He is our protector. We often pray that God would would place his hedge of protection around us. It is that acknowledgement that, that we seek the protection of Almighty God who is able to save us. And David says that, saving those whose hearts are true and right. In other words, God is our shield and our protector, saving those whose hearts are one with him, whose hearts are in communion with him, whose hearts are right with him. And the only way we have for assuring that is through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. And so David says, God is my shield, saving those whose hearts are true and right. That God is an honest judge. You see, with God there is no deceit. There is, there are no lies. There is no, uh, nothing about God that is not honest. He is not a dishonest judge. He is not a, a deceitful judge. That claim lays with Satan. Satan is the prince of lies. He is the one who continues to sow seeds of deceit and lies. He is not an honest judge. But God is. He's an honest judge and he is angry with the wicked every day. It does not please the Lord when we say or do things that are wicked, that are evil. It displeases him. And he is angry with those who sow seeds of wickedness, who sow seeds of evil, who pursue paths that are not of his will. And, and according to his purpose. Which is why we, Jesus gave us that prayer to pray. What we refer to as the Lord's Prayer. And we pray in that prayer, thy will be done. Meaning the, the prayers of our hearts are that God's will would be done in and through us. That 
the desire of our hearts is not to engage in ways that are evil or wicked because we don't want God's fierce anger to be against us. Indeed, we don't want to be against God. We want to stand with Him. And He is an honest judge. And so David continues by saying, If a person does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. If a person does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. Friends, repentance is necessary. We need to come before God with a, with a penitent heart, asking him to forgive us for our sins. And there are some who will claim that we don't need to pray for forgiveness because Jesus has borne our sins upon himself and he's paid our sin debt in full, past, present, and future, so we don't need to pray for forgiveness. But we do. We need to repent. We need to take our prayers of forgiveness to the Lord each and every day and ask him to cleanse us with the blood of Christ that we may be pleasing and acceptable to him. And you may say to yourself, well, pastor, I don't, I haven't sinned. And John would argue in his first letter that if we claim we have no sin, then we are only deceiving ourselves. And of course, the lies of Satan would have us believe that we have not sinned. And that God would not destroy us. Read chapter 3 and verse 1 of Genesis. And you can you read the deceptive lies of Satan, how he twists God's truth, God's word around so that it sounds true what he's saying. And as Isaiah says in chapter 5, verse 20, Woe to those who see evil as good. That's, that's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to see evil as good, to believe his lies. But David says, if a person does not repent, we need to repent, friends. We need to become, come before God's throne of grace each and every day and ask for his forgiveness each and every day in the name of Jesus Christ we ask the Lord for forgiveness and our sins may not be great they may not be murder or stealing or adultery they may be something simple as just speaking a harsh word to somebody not being kind to someone. Not showing the love of Christ when we have the opportunity to do so. And you see, the important thing for us to remember is God doesn't have a hierarchy of sin. He, he places the same need for repentance on somebody who fails to show the love of Christ or speak a kind word as somebody who commits murder. Sin is sin and sin separates us from God. And thanks be to God, Jesus died on the cross to bear our sins upon himself. But we still have to ask forgiveness in the name of Christ 
and his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. And so David says, if a person does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. And David knows about this firsthand. When he's confronted with his sin by the prophet Nathan. Confronting David with the sin of, of not only adultery with Uriah's wife Bathsheba, but also the sin of murder. Having Uriah killed on the front line to cover his tracks. But David realized thanks to Nathan, that he had sinned before God. And so he repented. He asked for God's forgiveness and for his pardon. And God is gracious. And he did forgive David. And he did pardon him of his sins. But there were still consequences for his sin, for his actions. But David repented because he knew that the only way to have a right relationship with God was to repent of his sin, ask for God's forgiveness, and receive the grace which comes from God alone. And we need to do likewise, friends. And the person who is unrepentant, the person who is unwilling to get on his knees before God and ask for forgiveness, to come to God's throne of grace humbly and confess his sin and ask for forgiveness, is the one who for whom God will sharpen his sword and will bend and string his bow. So friends, if you are one who believes that you don't need to pray for forgiveness anymore because Jesus has already done that for us, I want to correct you. We need to repent. We need to ask God to forgive us our sins. And be washed in the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. So friends, if you're carrying something in your heart that you have not brought to the Lord for forgiveness, I encourage you to do that this day. Don't let it go on. It will only grow worse. It will only fester. Take it to the Lord in prayer and ask for his forgiveness. And be released from the bondage of your sin. The bondage that Satan so desires for you to be kept in. Be set free by the blood of Jesus to walk humbly with our God. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day and for your word our daily bread, which nourishes us, convicts us, challenges us, rebukes us, but also encourages us, encourages us to desire to be in a right relationship with you, encourages us to make our lives right with you and with one another. And so, God, I thank you for this time in your presence. I thank you, God, for your word, which, which encourages and enlightens us. And I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who was willing to lay his life down for ours on the cross at Calvary, shedding his blood as payment for our sin. Heavenly Father, guide us and uphold us this day with your mighty and outstretched hand, that we may walk faithfully and humbly with you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures. Tomorrow from Psalm 8. So, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.